Aquabiz, all the best knowledge for aquatic system. And good morning, everyone. Um, I want to thank Kun Chu Chai for introducing me. And I did, I did uh, with my very poor grass so tie, I did hear he talked, this is the end of our financial year. And uh, I want to thank him actually very much because I know he's had a very active program the past few months. So if you've been paying attention to our programs, you probably have attended quite a few of them in the past couple of months. So as Kun Chu Chai said, I'm here to relate just to hopefully quickly introduce our program for those of you who are not familiar with it. Hopefully by now you have had a chance to, to uh, come to other programs before, but really our program is just about promoting U.S. soy to the aquaculture industry. And we've been doing this now for over 35 years, almost 40 years now. We're a nonprofit marketing agency, so I can't sell anything to you. I can't buy anything from you, but what I try to do with our team is to come out and give relevant information to you with regards to soy and other things related to aquaculture. If you're interested in, in trade, market access, human nutrition, animal nutrition, USEC does that too, but I'm not the right person. Kunchu Chai can send you the right person to talk to you about that. And we have a very active program around the world. In fact, one of our speakers here talks in different regions for, for shrimp around the world for us as well. We'll be hearing from him later on this, this, uh, this morning. So when it comes to the idea of soy, of course what we're talking about here is feeds, because that's, that's where the, the soy actually goes into. Yeah, you might use it for other things as well, like uh, maybe fertilizing your pond, but hopefully for the U.S. soy, you're using it in your feeds. And the way I like to think about our program is this. While we have a focus here on the feed mills and maybe on the producers, if we only focused on those two areas, I don't believe we would have a very effective program. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that in order for all culture to work correctly, every step of the production chain needs to work correctly. And so I'm very fortunate. The U.S. soybean farmers who fund our program have agreed with me and with our program to look at every step. So we look at the whole production chain, starting from broodstock and going to the end consumer. And we try to identify where are their bottlenecks in that production. What's holding back a larger feed-based aqua industry using high-quality feeds? And so, although there's not a lot of soy going to broodstock, we do do programs where we do uh, genetics. We'll do fin clipping. We'll do pit tagging. We'll do genetic microsatellite analysis. We'll work with hatcheries to try to get them to do a better job at, at their production. Especially when we think about what's happening at the, at the production stage or the grow-out stage, many farmers tend to think when there's a problem, they think that it's the feed or the seed. And of course, the feed and the seed are two, two of the most important factors coming into the farm. So we want to make sure those two are very strong and very good. But we also need to think forward in terms of the market. So if we're not thinking about the market at all times, then we're also failing in this. So what we'd like to see happen, no matter where someone is on this production chain, you think a couple of steps forward, a couple of steps back. And then very importantly, we also consider these bigger issues, for example, working with governments on policy issues, working on aquaculture health management, and thing in other organizations such as the BAP, which we'll be hearing from today, so certification bodies, to try to find ways we can work better together. So we do have different ways that we try to uh, approach the industry. Uh, I just put this slide up for reference. I'm not going to go into this very deeply. but. Our program is very focused in on how can we promote more soy and more U.S. soy into the industry. And although, although uh, we do try to work on, on uh, those other aspects, at the base of it, that is our program. And should I stop walking around as I see you're, you're filming here? Should I stay in one place? Okay. All right, so we have these different areas of focus for our program. I'm, they're going to be in the following slides. So I'm going to go through the next following slides. 
We have a very active program working with feed mills. To do that, we actually bring in feed specialists. So some of you who may know us from the past may remember Mr. Mark Newman, or even farther back, Mr. Timothy O'Keefe. They retired, and we hired a new, a new group to work with us, Wataya Aqua. Some of you may know Dr. Dominique Biro. This is uh, his company, and he's, he's usually the one that comes out to work with us, but he has a whole team of people. We also bring on experts such as Dr. Mian Riaz, who's uh, from the back over here, probably should get a front, front view. He comes out to work with feed mills on improving feed mill technology. We also have a yearly program on the, the International Aquaculture Feed Formulation Database. We do for feed formulation workshops for aquaculture to try to bring up the knowledge and experience of, ex of active formulators in the aquaculture space. And so this was actually something that was very important for us if we wanted to do group formulation exercises. So what happened was that USEC partnered up with many different other organizations to create the first commercial standard publicly available database for aquaculture formulation. We also have other, other tools that are coming out from our central office, the Nutrition Value Calculator. I feel that this one is actually much more targeted towards the terrestrial livestock industry because they're focusing a lot of on the energy and the, and, uh, that's coming out of soy, but it is something that they're trying to work on, on aquaculture as well. And you can go to, you'll be getting a copy of this presentation, I believe, in PDF, and you'll be able to go to this website to see more about this. We work with Ataya Aqua also on some of their feed, uh, their Aqua, Aqua feed platform tools. So a raw material map around the world to try to get a better sense of you know, what materials are out there, what's, what's their availability, and what's their use. Very important right now with the current situation, logistics in the world, and the, the, the blockages in trade. An economic valuation tool for those ingredients, and even a basic feed formulation tool. And when it comes to these workshops and what we do with these different tools, that's really the base of our program, obviously, because we want to work with feed mills, we want to work with formulators, and by, and by extension, we're trying to convince the formulators, convince their feed ingredient purchasers to purchase products like US soy products. We also do a lot of work on technology, and one of these technologies is the Inpon Raceway system. This is the one in Mana Genetics in, near in Petchabury. And what this is, is a way to allow existing pond farmers to increase yields, yields up to three times before, and also do it a much more, much more uh, safe way and a much more efficient way. We also work on offshore, offshore pen aquaculture. We're trying to promote this industry in Southeast Asia, particularly in Vietnam, the Philippines, and Indonesia. But even here in Thailand, we've got a lot of interest from the, the Thai Overseas Fishing Organization because they see that the future for fishing is maybe not so great and they're looking for alternatives for production. Then when it comes to shrimp, we are looking at super intensive shrimp technologies. There's a shrimp expert here. I'm not going to say much more, so he's going to probably maybe talk about things like this as well. We also work on recycling aquaculture systems. For us, this is primarily focused in on the hatchery industry, although in places like Singapore, of course, they're trying to do this on a, on a bigger basis. And in Singapore, they want to produce 30% of their, their production within Singapore, which is a pretty ambitious goal. They're not going to do that without using these kind of technologies. We do have an active demonstration program. And in fact, Kun Chuchai is our regional demonstration manager. He has travels around now a lot to different countries working on our demonstrations. And the intent here is, although many of the things that we're showing have been proven in other places, it's very difficult sometimes for people in one country to believe what's done in another country will work here. So we say, hey, this worked in China. We know it'll work here. They said, yeah, but that was China. It's not going to work here. And so we have to do it over again, bring it down here, and show people here. What we try to do, we try to identify opinion leaders, work with them, and then hopefully they'll convince other people that, of the benefits of this. So here's just some examples. I think this is from Myanmar. This is just a regular pond operation. This is um, in Vietnam using IPRS. And I forget what this one was, but this is, this is for the offshore pen culture. Uh, offshore cage culture, for those of you who are not familiar with the pen. We do a lot of research in terms of the value of different kinds of soy. So of course, there are different choices when it comes to soybeans and soybean products. 
We think that U.S. has a, a, a definite nutrient and uh, ingredient advantage. We try to show that in, in different ways. We also do research head-to-head, -head, particularly on soybean meal, where we, can, we bring in soybeans from different countries, have them crushed on the same equipment around the same time in the same way, and then use that for research purposes to show the value of the actual soybean meal coming from that. So we take out the processing aspect to make sure that it's actually the base value of the soybean meal itself. And that's been done in China now, I think, for five years. We started in Vietnam last year, and then uh, in Egypt, I think, for the past two years. You'll be having a, a, a presentation today from my, my colleague here, Denise, and she will be talking about BAP, but probably most of you are aware there's really three big certification programs, BAP, ASC, and, and Global GAP. And this is very important for us as we look forward uh, and I think just important for the region. When it comes to certification programs, my, the, the, the initial goal was to promote food safety. Food safety. You think back in the early 2000s, shrimp was being sent to Europe, and it was being stopped at the docks because they found nitrofurans or chloramphenicol, and they burned it because they said, if it's not safe for our citizens, it's not safe for any citizens. That was a big wake-up call for the industry. So food safety was the first thing, but as these programs have developed, they've gone into other areas as well, including sustainability, social welfare, and so on and so forth. And so we need to be paying attention to these. And particularly for the BAP program, we know that they have actually instituted for their feed standard a requirement for sustainability. So sourcing sustainably sourced ingredients. So Denise will be talking about this later. We do have a, uh, a sustainably sustainably uh, sourced soy logo. This has been more for the food side of USEX program, but we do know that, for example, in, in Vietnam, one of the feed mills thought this was important as a, one of their marketing things on their feed bags. So they actually have the, this soy logo on theirs. And what it requires is at least 60% of a feed mill to purchase their soy from, from US certified sources. During the pandemic, uh, we took the initiative to try to start to rebuild our library of technical bulletins. Many of you, um, or some of you, I, I'm pretty old, but uh, you all look very young, actually. So I was going to say, if you knew Dr. D. Nakayama, he's, uh, he's worked in my position in the past, and he had technical bulletins. Many of those have aged out. And so and during the pandemic, we really worked to create a lot more technical materials. The first 20 are online. You can go to the website and find them there. We also worked on creating a update of the Inpon Raceway System Manual, and that's gone online. And uh, right now, it's being translated into Thai as well. So that'll be coming out hopefully in the next couple of months. And then this is, I think, very important for our program. Conchucha, I myself, Concorn, uh, our whole team around the region and around the world, we try to be proactive. We don't try to be reactive. We try to figure out what is the industry going to need, try to get that information ready, whether it's a seminar, a training, a workshop, a, a paper, and get that in place so that when it's needed, it's available. An example of this is that USEC long back thought that soybean protein concentrate would be a great product for aquaculture. But back in the mid-2000s, people were saying, well, soybean protein concentrate, that's so expensive, and fish meal is cheap. Why would we want to use soybean protein concentrate? Well. We said, we're going to try anyway, and then show the value of it. So we did the research. We tried to see how much could be incorporated into feeds. Sure enough, fish meal went up in price, and then SPC went from a food grade to a feed grade product and became more, more available. So people then said, how am I going to use this? And we said, here's the paper. We're already ready for that. So that's an example of being proactive. So here at the end of my presentation, I think that we all know that all culture is a, is a great industry to be in. You know, there are there's ups and downs, but in general, we are not uh, a declining industry nor a stable industry. We are a continually growing industry. And it's something that is uh, very exciting for me. It's job security, of course. But I think in terms of looking forward to the future, we know that there's going to be a market there, and we know there's going to be an industry there. Feed formulations uh, right now are, are something that I think are getting a lot of attention. Feed mills that are trying to figure out how to make better feed formulations are now also challenged by logistical challenges with the world market. War in Ukraine, uh, COVID zero in, in China, all these things are causing disruptions of supply chain. 
So I think what we'll be seeing is that feed mills will be having more conversations with their customers about what a good quality feed is and how they should be using feeds. And I think it's a time to really have a, a, a better understanding for the farmers about what a good feed is. When it comes to data, I think we also need to see a closer collaboration in terms of sharing data. I would like to see feed mills and farmers sharing data more, more closely so that we can get better feeds into the hands of the farmers and the, the feed mills that have sales technical support can provide better servicing to their customers. And then when it comes to our program for USEC, we have a, a global program, we have a regional program, and a national program. So we try to really segment by, by those, those three different uh, classifications. We want to make sure that we, we pay attention to what is actually needed on the national level. We want to figure out what will help in the regional level and then bring information on a global level. So as I said before, John Har Hargreaves who's here, he's, he's someone who's on an international level and then coming working here on a national level. So with that, I want to thank you very much for allowing me to have a hopefully brief introduction. I wasn't paying attention to the time and uh, looking forward to having a good day today. Can you try? <laughs>